talking louder now. How about that? But we have to be who we are, people. You know, and if we don't, if we don't, if we aren't who we, if we don't, if we aren't free, if we don't feel free to be who we are, then we're something that we're not. And I think that everybody should be proud of whatever character has come out of you at this point in your life. Your, your character should have been shaped. I don't like this. Your character should have been shaped by now to at least a point where you're happy with yourself. I mean, I'm happy with myself. There, was, there are a lot of times when I'm not happy with myself. I do stupid stuff <laughs> all the time. And I wonder, what, where, what part of my ancestry did the stupid come from? You know? it, it shows its weird, ugly head on so many occasions. And I'm thinking, I'm not that stupid. You know, but, but still, God loves us. That's the main thing. God loves us, and he tolerates us. And so, you know, I was, when I was praying about what will I say to you, because I've been sick for a while, people, but I decided not to let the illness dictate how I live my life. So learning to manage and process heart failure is just something I have to do. It's like somebody's got kidney problems or diabetes or any other kind of thing. And as long as I'm above ground, I'm okay with that. I just don't like pills. And I was telling my group, have, do you, if you turn on the television set, the first commercial you see is going to be some kind of pill. They are killing people with pills. Everybody go to the pharmacy, and when you go to the back there, all you see are bags and bags of pills with somebody's name on it. Somebody, they're that sick. The America is just sick. We're full of pills. And then people wonder why they have mental illness or why you bear kids that are dysfunctional or your family's all out of Because you don't have too many pills. Pills have taken over, and it's not big pharma. It is the doctors and the hospitals. They're in conjunction with one another so that they can keep this billion dollar empire growing. Because, you know, somebody cut their finger, oh, we got a pill for that. Or my left tummy on hers, oh, I got, I got a pill for that. So you never, you know, every time, and, then, and you can have diabetes, and there's nine different types of medication for my, how do we need nine? It's like when you go to the grocery store, there's 15, you have to stand at the bread aisle for an hour to decide what kind of bread you want. <laughs> it's totally greed. Our country has become a country of greed and excess. And until we can learn how to, to hone our characters, which I'll get to my starting point in a minute, hone our characters into something better than we are, we're gonna destroy ourselves. It's inevitable, it's happening already. We can't stay, wars are everywhere. People just can't seem to get into any type of peaceful relationships with one another. So we've got, whether we want to get old and crotchety and, oh, I don't want to do this or that, or okay, that's fine. But the world still is in the situation it's in, and you have been chosen by God to come and to do something about this, so you cannot sit back and say, I ain't got nothing to do. You'd be lying to yourself. There's so much to do, and so few people that really want to do it. That's the issue. And if you, I tell my people, you don't want to do something, don't do it. I don't care if you do it or not. That's on your conscience. When you get grown and old, that's on you. But as for me and what I do, I've got to serve God. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is what has mother, and I'm, I want to talk about mother. That's, that's the essence of what we're dealing with now is the heart of this woman who says she has not been heard and what is her what is what is the reason why we should deal with this well, let me take you back when father first started bringing his word or his message he was looked at as being crazy heretical um, he, the christians thought he was just off the page altogether but, what he, but he attracted a whole lot of folk because he had a message that was going to appeal to people, but only some people. See, that's what I've come to the conclusion. There are a lot of people out here in the world, but only some people can get it in their minds. And even Father has said to us, oh, some people just kind of lucked up in here. Some people came because their ancestors brought them. Some people just came. However you came, but you're here. And so everybody's at a different level of spirituality. But I think what Mother's trying to do is help us just learn how to round ourselves up. We don't have a whole lot of time. If I've got 20 more good years, I'm doing good. 
So we have to think about this area at this time of our life. What I look back and say, what have I, what have I done? Okay, that's gone. What am I doing and what can I do? I think Mother is really trying to help us all get to that point, especially our generation. Some of us may feel, and I, you know, I'm not trying to put anybody on any spots or anything, because myself, I'm at the age now where I don't even want to get up sometime in the morning. Okay, so it, it, but I'm honest about myself with these things. And that's what we have to do. We have to become honest with ourselves. But what I really want us to understand, though, <clears throat> is what is Mother asking us to do? What message has she been conveying to us for quite some time? She is asking us to understand the essence of Jesus and the essence of herself. What does that even mean? What is the essence of anything? Is the, the soul, the core, the heart, the guts of something? That's his essence. So how do you dig into understanding the essence? You have to dig into whatever that is. You have to dig into that person. So she wants us to understand her person, the woman of mother, what she's comprised of, what she's made of. She told us all about herself in her memoir. But what I want to look at is what is she doing today? I see a frail, 80-something year old little Korean lady who's got the power of, I don't know how many. It's her spirit that is just so unstoppable because she just feels the urgency. Do we feel that? Have we understood her character enough to know that this is what she's trying to impart to us? She talks about her great-great-grandchild, Jung, 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 Jung Ha. And how smart she is and how she can tell her to do something and she'll do it and, and mother will think, oh, she's not going to remember that, but she does. So a, 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 a generation of brilliant minds is possible, but it's going to take understanding the character of those that we're choosing to lead, to, <clears throat> to follow the words of, and understand that person. Now, how, 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 you know, here's something. I, this, I found this speech that I want to share with you because I know that the only real way we're going to understand her essence is by to understand what she's saying. And you can't understand what she's saying unless you're reading it. And you can't really digest it unless you read it and read it and read it. Yeah, I know we read a lot, but that's where you're going to understand it. You see a Christian with his Bible, some of them are so worn out because it's all they do is read the Bible. They can give you every scripture up and down. How many of mother's words can we quote? How many of father's words can we just off the bat just speak? Something to think about. So this speech was given, I've been reading a lot of her words, and some of them are just so amazing. This was given November the 11th. It was supposed to be a special meeting with, with a special meeting with the two parents of heaven, earth, and humankind. It was at the Korean Careers Training Center. Your courage, boldness, and wisdom is responsible for saving this country. Now, I, I love this picture of her. You look at this picture of her. You look at her face. She ain't no, she's serious. She ain't playing. And I don't think we understand the seriousness with which this woman is living her life. She's 80 years old, can't get around, gotta have somebody to help her get around. But yet her heart is for the people of the world, not just America. Oh, she loves America. That's why this time next year, we need to be, we need to have so many people ready to go to Korea. Seriously. That's gonna be a big deal. We, we think we've done something here. We did Madison Square Garden twice. Okay, yeah, we did that. We did Yankee Stadium. We did Washington Monument. We did this, we did that, we did all that stuff. But what if we, if we really want to do something, we need to be there next year with a cadre of people. That should be such news that every news station in the world has it. That's the, that should be the biggest thing. Bigger than Meghan Markle and Harry's wedding and Diana and them all. That's how we should think. People, okay. Look at just when I look at her, I just think she's so sweet. Yesterday, I watched the whole program from beginning to end. Professor O. Tate Young, you did very good work. I know the professors did their best with their presentations, but I would make one point. When you explain about the responsibility of the Messiah of the Second Coming, I think you need to add a little more content. 2,000 years ago, Jesus could not avoid the path of the cross, yet he said he would come again. He said that when he returned, he would hold the marriage supper of the Lamb. Heavenly parents dream. 
is to experience the kingdom of heaven on earth with true parents and with their children who have perfected their character during their earthly lives. Essence. Perfected their character. That's what she's saying. These people are going to be the ones that perfected their character during their lives on earth. You got one life, one chance, one opportunity. What are we doing with it? God carried out the providence in the hope that life in the kingdom of heaven on earth will continue as eternal life in the kingdom of heaven in heaven. So the reason he wants it here is so it will be there. You can't have there what you can't have here. You see, we can, we can, oh, we're going to go to heaven when we die. What hell is that? I heard, of, I heard anything about that recently. Get the train to heaven, people. Oh, yeah, there's a train to glory. It never says heaven. It always speaks about the train to glory. You ever notice that? It's not that. And people equate glory with heaven. Wait a minute. Okay? Not necessarily. So she said, since Foundation Day, as I have been carrying out the providence, we need to create an environment where people can attend heavenly parents. Oh, we talk about that all the time. How do we attend God? We attend God. How can we attend God? And I think, how can I attend God? By attending these brothers and sisters, by serving. We must therefore have the environment in which at least one third of the billion people, of the eight billion people in the world can come to know and attend heavenly parents. We got a tea spoon. We got a half a teaspoon full. That can't spice up nothing. A half a teaspoon of something is almost a half a teaspoon of nothing. She says, to achieve this, I had to not just make a declaration, but show the reality that we had established the conditions to restore at least seven religious orders, seven nations, and a continent. Following this, I declared the firm settlement of Chung Yo's book. This woman's mind is on nothing but Chung Yo's book. She's not caring about her kids that are out there, up there in Tennessee, Pennsylvania, where they are acting like fools. Y'all said it, and I don't care if you repeat it. You repeat it. Pastor Morgan said it. That the young Janelle Moon is a fool, yes. Because he's doing foolish things that aren't getting him anywhere. He's moving from place to place to place. That's not, uh, that was not in one of God's grand design. But back to my point. So even though that's happening, even though her own family is, is so astray and so out there, do you not think that she cries at, about that at night? This woman's character is not only for, for her family, but for us. So she'd rather sacrifice them so that she can do what she knows God has told her what she had to do to finish Father's mission on this earth. So what do we do? No, I'm not asking you that. I'm asking myself. What am I doing? Oh, I get a little sick. Oh, no, I can't do nothing now. I'm crammed. I can't go in my house. I can't go in. Are you going to judge me? I'm not going to judge you. Are you going to swear to my home? So, okay, no, I can't even come to, I'm in Durham. I can't come over here and at least say something to you all. I don't care if not, my doc said, because he wouldn't keep me in there a couple extra days. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm leaving him. I'm not, my heart rate is ready to go now. I got to go. He said, well, what do you say? I said, you know what, sir, let me tell you something. You made a comment. You said, if, no, he said, you are one lucky one. I said, lucky? He said, yeah, because he said, you came in here, or you are stroking a heart attack, don't wait to happen. I said, that ain't got nothing to do with luck. And everything to do with the power of God. And I said, so I'm walking out of here. I'm telling you, reminding you, I got to get out of here. Because if I sit up and lay up in here in this hospital bed, I can't do what the Lord said to do. If I die doing it, and I've died, lived, I've died, it's okay. I'll be okay with that. And this is, I think this is what Mother's trying to get us to understand. If she dies on this path, it's okay that she done what she's supposed to do. She's done what God asked her to do. So if we die, I just think about a good brother friend of mine I work with at UTS, Henry Christopher, he's in heaven. I think about that. I could be next. Any one of us at any moment in time could be next. Well, we could be next. We don't know. So are we prepared in the eventuality of whatever should happen? Are our families prepared? Have we left enough behind to leave a legacy? 
Have we understood her character, her motivation, her desire? Do we realize that it comes from God or do we think it's just coming from her? We better get the cap on right people. Oh, I struggled with it. Oh, no, my husband, what? Only be God, God, only be God. So I'm just second coming of the sign. I'm too old, worry about none of this mess. Now let somebody else figure that stuff out. Let me just live in peace. There will be no peace. Our spirits will never be at peace until we can find the peaceful essence that God said in his word. He said the peace that surpasses any understanding that you've ever had. And if you ever get one minute of that, you don't ever want to go back to what you were before. I think mother, father knew that. Mother knows that. So it's like she wants us to be able to develop that peace. If we can develop that peace in our families, that peace would then permeate to our societies, our communities. Everybody around us would have that peace because we couldn't have anything but peace. That's what she's trying to do. Bring peace. We look at, um, when you go home, look down at your block. Is, is there peace on your block? It might seem peaceful, but I bet you in somebody's household, they screaming at their youngins, they hollering at the dog, they yelling at the TV. There ain't a whole lot of peace. But they think it's peaceful because they think that's normal. But what mother has come and told us, that's not normal. It's not normal for us to have all these problems and challenges in our lives. Oh, my God did not intend for that to happen. But it did, and now we're at the point of what we're going to do. Why did it? Not me. And not any of us should want to labor so hard. She has said, the only way we're going to get anything accomplished is by understanding art and culture. There's no one there, declaration, man, no, 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 you can make your own familial declarations if you want to, but, you know, she's not going to, she says, well, I'm not making any more declarations, and none for those. You know, we have to family by family, mend, heal, fix. You know, that's one of the things that I know our church is, is lacking. It's lacking psychological and mental support. It is lacking an understanding of the elderly need to be taken care of. I've always said we need an old folks plan. We need a crazy people's plan. We need plans. How are we going to deal with the ills of the world? I don't want to think about this. How do we deal with it? Do we have, well, okay, we've got hospitals in church. Do we have a hospital here in America for somebody? No. But are there brilliant enough people within our ranks to be able to? Yes. We have brilliant people, but what are you doing? What am I doing? It all comes back down to me, my responsibility. Because I have to look to her because she's taking her responsibility. I'm not her. I'm not even necessarily trying to be like her, but what I want to do is emulate the, the, the values and the character traits that she possesses and that she has to give to the world. Because she's done that her whole entire life. I can't imagine. She knew Father better than anybody else. I can't imagine being in that household and you know listening to him night after night after night, playing this after that after this, and silence. I would have, he would just kick me out the first couple of days because I wasn't ready to be quiet. Well, Father, when I die, yo, you can even take me quiet. She was silent for how many years? How many years? Then she opened her mouth and got closed. Well, we couldn't even say anything the first couple of minutes. She did. Everybody said, oh, no. Why? Because she's this Korean woman. She was always in the background. I guarantee you one thing. I wouldn't play with her if I were you. That's a powerful force. You want to know how I know? I've experienced that. She started this whole Shang Shen Wan process. And I don't know if you all really realize the importance of that. If you don't go in there once or twice a week, that's your mess. I'm just here to tell you, because that room will transform you. And I'm not saying go in there today and then well, three weeks from now I'll go back again. No, you have to be consistent. You have to go in there at least once, twice, three times a week. And you have to, but when you go in there, not just go in there, but you gotta go in there with the attitude that I'm gonna make Heavenly Father hear me. I'm gonna tear the roof off the top of the building. Because that's what he needs. And we all know as we know this. We have that passion and that fire within us, but we've gotten a little bit, oh, now, now I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about you, I'm talking about me. So then I have to look at myself and say, what am I going to do? 
Am I gonna sit here and stew in my juice? Well, it ain't even smelling me too tasty right now. Let me get up. We have a lot to do. She started with, not with the Christian world, but with the Muslim world. I told them, she told them, she said, I am the only begotten daughter and they welcomed me. The entire Korean leadership did not accept her, but a group of Muslims could. How crazy is that? The ones that should have rallied around her and saw her for who she was and supported her, but no, 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 don't say that, don't say this, don't say this, no, you can't say this. But the Muslims, somewhere outside of the rank, totally over there on the other side, they welcomed her. Prof. Professor Radebi, down in South Africa. I'm telling you, y'all, when Africa rises up, the world better watch out. Because when those people get serious about something, they, those people, that they're serious about mother, they never saw true parents because mother came to get the blessing. Never saw true parents. Some of the people been members for 40, 50 years, never saw true parents. But their, their faith and their fervor is unparalleled. She went there and they stepped up and stepped out. Do we do that? We say we're going to do that. How are we going to act when we're done? We come from 70. Are we ready? Now, first of all, I'm not what, you know, I'm not one of them celebrity chasers, you know. I'm not one of them celebrity chasers. But yes, we need to we need to show not it's not just Reverend Duncan that we need to show, we need to show God. It's time for us to stop worrying about doubting over there, doubting over Dr. Shield. I don't care what Alan, Dr. Shield, Reverend Duncan. Now mother comes and says something to me, and I'm gonna be very attentive to that. I listen to them, but then I also have to listen to God. If I truly trust God and that He's working in my life, and that He's brought me to a point where He wants me to do a certain thing. If I don't trust that voice that comes to me, first of all, you got to shut up so you can hear it. That's something I really want people to understand. You can talk to God all day long, but you need to then be quiet. So for every 30 minutes of talking that you do in the Chuck Shen Wan, maybe you need to spend another hour in silence. There's something to be said about silence. If we move forward with the only begotten daughter at the forefront of national restoration and global restoration, things will work out well. And she's speaking to the Koreans, but we can really relate that to America. Things will work out well. She came here. She came here and went down to Death Valley. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's hot and stinky. Okay? Because it's just so the air is so hot and sticky that it's just it has sort of its own kind of smell. But she went there and then she took salt, the pure salt from the earth, and made a whole whole salt. When I um, multiply that, you know, they back and said, you know what I mean? And all I got had, luckily I had these gloves that I got from Reverend Kim when he came and did the um, the touch and ones. And I said, I'm gonna do this right. And I did, right? It felt so holy. I felt holy. But we all can feel holy because we all holy. So I wonder if there's nothing that I want to impart on you today. And let me give you this too. When you drank that holy wine and you made that vow to that part, I don't care if they're gone dead, I don't care if they're divorced, I don't care if you made a commitment. That commitment, if you're divorced, okay, then you still, that commitment was between you and God. That changed you. Your blood lineage was then changed over to God's side when you started your family and, and moved on from there. But unless we believe that we are now new creatures with new skins, that we'll stay stuck in that old muck and mire which mother's trying her best to get us out of. This is a little girl I said, she said, think about it, there's a fourth generation member of our family. Moon Jung Ah is a little over a year old. I try to play with her for 30 minutes or an hour if possible. You know, this child is really smart. Once I tell her something, she doesn't forget. These days, she's talking a lot. So now, when she comes up to the living room where I am and sees my lady assistants, she says hello. She greets them first, using the words she knows that matches the situation. Strong young. When we play with the dolls together, I see in her face when she's feeling tired. She's been up since early morning, and it's time for her to have a nap. But even though before she goes to have a nap, she puts all of her little toys away, so she's a disciplined child. 
And our children grew up with a certain type of discipline, but this is discipline, children, okay? Then I'm going to go on down here to, 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 because this is the point I want to end up with, guys. Heavenly parent longs for such a life on earth. Think about that for a moment. He longed to be with Adam and Eve and see them duplicate or replicate, procreate, reproduce, and have a family, and let the whole world be populated with all of these beautiful creatures of heaven. He didn't get that. He got cast aside. I should have created this environment sooner, Mother says. The mission of the true parents is to attend heavenly parent on earth. Yet this, yet from foundation day until this, the 11th year of Chungo Book, I've been by myself. She's alone, nothing but God. What is it that I must do for Father? What does Father in the spirit world wish from you all? I have said that from now on, the Unification Church will continue with that spirit of truth. That's why I have been working, I have been saying that we will work with the dual system of Chung Shimwan and the Family Federation working together as one. Why is prayer at Chung Shimwan important? We are saying that Father and the Spirit will should come forward to expand the environment that Heavenly Parent needs. This is, heavenly, this is Father's desire and humanity's desire. Therefore, we should all pray to True Father fervently at Chung Shimwan. We will visit this place today. Pray. Please be with us, Father. Please show us the power of heaven. Do you understand? Now, this is something that I think America really needs to understand. The politicians of the country, this could be any country, the intellectual class of the country, any country. What is this? Good way. Bye. Oh, what is this? It's the devil. Right, when I'm trying to get started, sing that song. It wants to do some stupid stuff. The politicians of this country, any country, the intellectual class of the country, any country, not knowing the essence of the heavenly providence or how the course of the providence came, is working at, and is going to be, the people of the nation could take, should take responsibility and act as the chosen people are still unable to see or hear. Up, uh, when I read that, I thought she was going to say, should stand up and take, no, she said they don't even know. We don't even know who we are. We better ask somebody. We can't have politicians who don't know the providence running the country. That's, that's, now that's a big deal there. Even though we know that that's going to take a long while. That is why we should do our best to educate them in all areas. We have to let them know. That's why we got I, I, um, IPF. UPF. UPF. I, Universal. I, I, okay. Not an IV, but a UPF. Yeah, <laughs> and we have these organizations that, that are working diligently with politicians. And I've seen Michael do, they're always doing some kind of forum, some kind of war, some kind of discussion. It's going to take a whole lot, though. That is a, we have the time for such thing does not last. We cannot be late. We cannot be late. We're running behind the eight ball, people. In that regard, she's not afraid of anything now. That's what got me. When she said she was not afraid, then I knew I, I, knew I could I'd be all right. Because I'm just as crazy as a man. I'll do some stupid stuff. It may seem stupid. It may seem crazy at the time. But then when I've done it and I get some kind of a result, Oh, that wasn't so crazy, was it? Because we're not usual. You want to be usual? You want to be normal, you be normal. Be normal by yourself. I tell you, don't come to me with you. I don't want to. No. Gail Davis and I have this thing now. There's sense. There's common sense. There's nonsense. And then there's no sense. <laughs> and a lot of people are running with no sense. So we've got to get sense. We've got to, first of all, understand who we are. Now is the time, and this is it. Now is the time, folks, when courage, boldness, and wisdom, not just my responsibility, it's not just Bob's or Mama Lucy, it's all of our responsibility to take boldness, courage, and wisdom and go out there and not be afraid to talk to people. When I go over to the hall walkers, I talk, the only thing I talk to them about now is career. They can sit here and talk about career. So I'm like, well, what do you mean? 
Well, we got our passports. We're ready to get your money together because you ain't had camp or nothing. You can pay for this one on your own. We can't even ready. Why? Because we ain't got no time. We don't have any time. We cannot be late. Do you understand? Courage, boldness, and wisdom. No one will oppose us no matter where we go. Mother said, if you take that Death Valley home stop, I'm guaranteeing you it works, y'all. I got a little bit too. A little bit bottle like this. And I take it out. When I talk to people, they listen. But then again, I'm talking with a different voice. I'm talking with the voice of authority. I'm talking with the voice of meaning and purpose and direction. No longer am I speaking because I just want to hear myself talk. I don't have time for that anymore. I laid on a deathbed. And when I woke up, I promised God, I'm not going to waste no more of your time. Now, when I get tired, I will sit down. But I'm telling you, we cannot afford to be tired. If you don't have courage, if you don't have boldness, if you're not courageous, if you can't do that, then die. Go ahead, because your life don't mean a darn thing right now. But if you can pick up Mother's Cross, if you can take the words that Father has given us, if you can understand how Jesus is laboring with a cross that he should no longer have to carry, then we are not doing anything. So I implore you, I beg you, find your spot, be bold, be courageous, carry the torch, pick up the cross, because if you don't do it, when you go, if, if we die, and we go to our eternal home, we might be surprised at what we find. And this is not something I'm saying. Father is telling us, the scripture is telling us, so don't waste God's time no more. For God's sake, don't waste mother's time. And for heaven's sake and your own family's sake, don't waste your own time. Because one day, you're going to find out you're out of time. Don't be late. Join me. Oh God, our beloved heavenly parents, how long you have waited with desire in your heart to know who we were as your children. And we continue to stray away, thinking that we know we don't know nothing, God. We come before your throne of grace grateful for the very air that we breathe, for the ruah that you have given us, that breath of life, for the limbs that we can move around in, for these bodies that you've given us, but we understand that we are spirit, living human existence. So we want to go forward with faith, with boldness, with conviction, with determination to, do, to lead our people out of bondage, just as Moses did. And we got a whole lot more to go on than Moses did. But God, we have to come before your throne. We have to go to you in prayer in the chunk one. And we will boldly speak everything out. We can go out. We should be so bold that we can go out into that middle of the street of Guest Road and Duke Street and still proclaim that you are God. Pray it with all of our hearts and all of our souls because that's what you love. A car couldn't hit us if it did. The car would burn up. But until we can understand who we are, until we can know ourselves completely, until we can understand the essence of Jesus, the essence of our true parents, the essence of our mother's heart, we will forever be lacking in that power and the spirit that you want us to walk in. We have power untold, but we have to believe and have the faith that we can execute it in our lifetime. That's right. So as we go forth from this, this time right now, as brothers and sisters, we thank you for the opportunity to have spoken. We thank you for life itself. We thank you for this time in history that we're living. When so many wanted to live, but they didn't live through this time, and we're now here and now and our, our true parents, the, the saviors of mankind, are 80 years old. We repent, Father, that we have not done that, not given them or not. We think we might have sacrificed. We think we might have done something. But God, there's so much left to do. So we give our whole hearts to you this morning. We, we thank you for our mother and her words and her wisdom and her understanding and her abilities. And we just pray and continue to pray for her safety, for her well-being, for the well-being of her family. 
Father, for the well-being of all the families that are present here and those that are present. I pray for this state and this leadership that we can move forward in faith and conviction, bringing about a bold new world so that there can be light, love, peace, and happiness for all humanity as you yes, wish for it in the very beginning. And we pray all these things collectively as brothers and sisters bless the true families. Amen.